So I've had a lot of people um, been asking me about bulk film and how to do it, what's the point, and all the rest of it. Um, so I thought I'd put a little something together. Um, bulk film is, is basically, um, as it sounds, it's, it's buying film in a roll in bulk. Um, I thought I had somewhere a 36 exposure roll of FP4, but I don't. Um, the main reason for doing it um, is basically the cost. Um, a 36 exposure roll of something like FP4 Plus at the moment costs about six pounds for 36 exposures. A um, 100 foot bulk roll like this, if you look online, they're around about 65 to 70 pounds. Um, but if you shop around, you can get them as low as 50, and you'll get about 18 to 20 rolls out of that. Um, so now your cost per roll has gone down from sort of six pounds to about two and a half pounds. Um, if you're happy to work with expired film, um, you can get rolls for less than half of that. Um, most of these others cost me around about 18 to 20 pounds. So, you know, with those, it works out to about a pound a roll. Um, basically, I'm not going to open these because the lights are on. You need to do this entirely in the dark, uh, either in a dark room or in a, in a changing bag. Um, but essentially inside the box you'll get a black bag um, a black light type bag with your film inside it on a roll um, and in the dark room you'll take this out of there out of the bag and put it into your, your bulk film loader and this is an olden 74 daylight bulk loader that someone gave me and you can see there that's how the film looks on the spool and I've already got one in here at the moment I've got a lot of empty spools in here as well. And I keep, I keep it in eat. I don't need to, but I keep it in the box just to help keep dust, uh, to keep dust off it. Um, because the last thing you want to do is get dust on your film or inside here um, or on the felt of the canisters because that can scratch the film as it, either as you're loading it or when it's being used coming out of the spool and loaded onto the uh, the spool inside the camera or once you're at the end of the roll and you rewind it it goes back and gets scratched again um, so if you get any crap uh, or dust or little specks on here um, you know you've got three or four chances where the film's going in and out that you can scratch the film um, and I've had it happen it's it's not nice when you get you develop a roll and and you got big scratches down half of it um, but basically you, you know your film sits under here um, on this particular one it's got a little lever to stop you opening up this plate um, which is where you, your empty canister goes in but on this one you just unscrew that a little bit to loosen the top set it to open and that opens the it doesn't it opens it so that you can basically open this box it closes the light trap it, it's it's a bit confusing really because open and close your arrows are pointing what appears to be the wrong way this going that way basically closes the light trap and allows you to open it up um, and there you can see the film sticking out the end which gets attached to this spool um, a lot of people use masking tape I prefer to use um, good quality gaffer tape. Um, I buy mine from a theatrical chandler's. Um, it's not cheap. Um, it's about an inch thick, and these cost me, I think they're about seven pounds for a roll. And and you can, this one just lays around, not doing much. Um, so it's gotten a bit covered in dust. Um, but normally they're nice, pristine white when they're brand new. But basically, I tear off a very small, thin strip. about half an inch by the width of the tape which is an inch and I use that to attach the film to the spool what it's very difficult to get this on crooked um, you know it, it because these um, I don't know plates I guess you call them because they're so thick you know once you've got the film on there it doesn't really 
it doesn't really flex so how you know it you know it's going to go on straight but you line that up with the end like that and i just hold it on with my thumb and just tape the end um like i said a lot of people use uh masking tape to do this um but i found masking tape doesn't tend to always be the best um if you get a bad batch of masking tape once you get to the end of the roll um it, it can just pull off and then you've got to you can't reload your camera while you're out on a job you have to wait till you get home and open your camera in the dark room and in the dark take the end of the film back onto the spool back into the canister and then manually rewind it um otherwise you 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 know if you open it up in the day you're going to expose the whole film so once that's in i just hold these apart very slightly with my my forefinger and my thumb and just slide it over the film and occasionally once I've got to this bit I'll actually put the whole thing in a changing bag that way I can pull it out that extra couple of inches to load it into the end without exposing it um, because what you may find is that at the very end um, you'll, you'll get half a shot exposed at the end of the roll and, and a couple of times it's it's been a shot that I've really quite liked and it's been a bit disappointing when I've gotten to the end of the roll and uh, and it's only half a frame but uh, but once you've got that loaded onto the spool you just pop the cap back on and these are plastic spools that I'm using you can get metal ones as well um, and you can also get them DX coded so that once you put them into your camera um, your camera knows what speed it is um, that obviously only works if the coating on the canister matches with the film you're putting in it um, at the moment in this I think I've got is it yeah Tri-X pan ISO 400 film going in here and this expired in 2004 um, so it's about eight years out of date but I've, I've had pretty decent results with it so far and uh, this one comes in a tin inside the box um, with the Ilford FP4 plus it was just a bag inside the box this comes in a tin and then there's a bag inside the tin and then your spool of films inside that so you know depending on when you get it um, it, it can be packaged differently and that's how Ilford used to package their films um, this is an old canister of FP4 uh, no indication as to when it actually expired but they quit making this in 1990 um, so it's at least 22 years old so that'll be fun to experiment with um, once you've got your canister connected to the film you make sure that your numbers are here on this particular one you reset that to zero and you load that into the end pop that back on pop the lever back over and then you can slide that to the open position which again it doesn't make sense because you've just closed it but it actually opens the light trap um, and then tighten that down hold that hold that in and you screw that around and you can see well you might be able to see as I'm screwing it around this dial here is going around frame 10 15 20 25 30 35 36 now it's at 36 exposures worth on the roll but you want to wind it onto the zero because you need to have some for a leader for when you're loading the film um, plus you've already got some at the beginning of the film that you've exposed to the light when you were loading it so you wind it onto zero um, and then you're basically done and I've put my scissors down somewhere and they're not here so I will be right back so once we've got it all done we loosen that up again close the light trap and we can open it up without exposing the film that's in there that's what opening and closing does there's a light trap in there to stop light getting in so that when you close it film can't get exposed and once this is open it's designed in such a way that you can't open the light trap but once we've done that we just take the scissors cut along there and then we can take the canister out
and there we have a 36 exposure roll of Tri-X 400 and what I do when I put it into an empty canister is I'll take a piece of the white gaffer tape pop it on there and that way I know what film I've shot or loaded and I'll just write on here Tri-X 400 and I'll usually if it's available put the expiration of the film and the date I've loaded it which is something of July 27th is it I think and there it's all labeled up so that when it comes time to actually using it I know exactly what it is and occasionally what I'll do as well when I'm actually loading this into the camera this is another reason I use the gaffer tape because it comes off and re-sticks so easily I'll take it off the canister and put it onto the roll itself so that once it's in the camera I know what it is um, and when it's time to come out of the camera it doesn't matter which canister I put it in um, that way as well I know that if there's no gaffer tape on the outside of the canister I know that that film's been used and it needs to be developed if there's tape on the outside on the canister itself I know I've not used it yet and it's a full roll ready to be used and that's pretty much it um, the canisters themselves these are pretty cheap if you look online on eBay they're actually pretty expensive um, these are the plastic ones that I use and I've got loads of them um, the only reason I've got so many is because I only have one bulk film loader and as you saw at the beginning of the video I've got six or seven different rolls of bulk film um, but as I've only got one bulk loader I can only have one loaded at a time um, and to unload this put it back in the box load up another one it's um, it's a lot of risk and hassle um, of exposing film to light, getting fingerprints on the film, having the film just completely fall off the spool, um, which, which fortunately hasn't happened yet, but I know people it's happened to, and it's not nice trying to rewind a hundred foot of film back onto a spool in uh, in a changing bag. Um, so if I really, really want to try out a different type of film, I'll just load up 20 rolls and empty the whole spool at once. Um, and then I can load something else um, but these on eBay um, are around about anywhere from sort of three to six pounds each um, I went to one of my local camera shops in town and I got them for 50p each um, you know so I've got around 60 or 70 of these now and it hasn't been that expensive um, but it means I can load up lots of rolls if I'm going away for a few days um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, one thing on the older cameras. On this, um, I typically don't put a leader on them because in my N90S, where you enter the film, the groove to put the film in runs the whole width of the spool. On the older cameras like the FTN um, and the FT3, it actually needs a leader because the groove's only about this big. So what I'll do is I'll just cut the top corner off about like that and that's essentially enough so that this can go in the groove it'll catch on the sprocket but this isn't going to stop it from going in um, and that's basically it so that's loading the bulk film um, at some point when this is empty um, I'll pop another one up uh, with some exposed film um, just to show you how we load this um, but right now as I said it's got a about 80 foot of film in it so I don't I don't fancy opening it under the light it's um, a bit of an expensive mistake to make but uh, but yeah so that's it for now I'll uh, I'll see you next time